Hey guys, and welcome back. Now the pond's in full swing right now. It's doing really, really well. But we've got one thing, we've got one problem. And this might not cause a problem right away, but it's definitely gonna pro cause a problem as the, as, as the summer progresses and it gets hotter. But uh, let's get into it. Pond's doing really, really well. I don't know if it'll show up or not, but the goldfish population's doing really, really well. There's a nice large one there with one of the breeders. And then there's a bunch of young, you can see them there through the breeds, hopefully. But the water's already starting to turn a little bit turbid and a little bit green. And that's because one problem that's not happening. You can still see I left the hose out there uh, in the event that it gets a little bit warm. You know, a lot has changed since the video that just came out that you guys saw about a week back. We've gone into full, we, have, we it's like we skipped spring when we went directly into summer and it's changed dramatically. So I was out here just the other day working with the sweet boat and uh, the frog population is back. As you can see the geese population, they're going over there to my neighbor's place. That's right, don't miss you guys. You guys go ahead, go over there, pooping all over my beach. But the frog population's doing well. The goldfish population, you can see goldfish surfacing literally all over the place in the pond. I count almost a dozen of them in different spots right now. They're doing really, really well. There's a little cluster of them kind of right there just off the rocks. But the one issue is the windmill. Windmill runs, there's no issue with the windmill whatsoever, but the line isn't even in the water. Now, because we're so far, as you can see how far away we are from the house, we're probably about 600 feet away from the house. Running power out here just didn't really make sense. So we went and got this big windmill, I don't know, about two years ago, put it on the pond, and it really, really solved every problem that we had. It uses the, the natural power of the wind, which we are never in a short supply here. Even by it doing this a little bit, it still, it still works. It, it stores the energy in the, in the generator there, and then it pumps down as a diaphragm and it pumps down this line, then I've buried the line, and the line actually comes out underground way over there. You see a bunch of goldfish, and the line actually is just literally just sitting here right now. And the reason it's sitting there right now is the air stone no longer works. The air stone is just like an ordinary aquarium air stone, just on a much larger scale. But as you can see, it's got all sorts of calcium deposits and all sorts of other things into it, bacteria and stuff have probably Algaes and stuff have all gone inside and filled all the pores so the air stone doesn't really work anymore. So we're going to have to deal with trying to either find a way to buy a new air stone for this giant thing. This thing weighs about, I don't know, about four pounds. And we chuck it out there in the deepest part of the lake. Or, which buying another one right now really isn't even an option. It's not a matter of cost. It's just a matter of actually acquiring it and having it shipped. Right now, if I were to order this from some of the manufacturers in the U.S., uh, shipping might take, you know, a month or two. I don't even know right now. So we've got to find a way to make this air stone work for the pond. All right, well, the product that I've mentioned before is muriatic acid. Now, muriatic acid is also known as hydrochloric acid. It's an aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride. It's a colorless solution with a very distinct pungent odor. It's an extremely strong and caustic acid it's actually a component of gastric acid, which would be the digestive systems uh, in our digestive system of most animal species, including us. This stuff has a pH of 3.1. It's extremely caustic, but it's in a highly effective cleaning or etching product for products such as concrete for removing buildup of scale and biological buildup. But it's not something to be fooled with. This is an extremely dangerous product. So you always want to dilute mu muriatic acid. Usually the recommended to start with is 10 to 1, 10 parts of water to one part of muriatic acid. This is just water at this point right now. And as I mentioned, this is not something to be fooled with. If working with this can pose all sorts of health risks. Exposure directly to the skin can cause severe burns. Inhaling the fumes can burn lungs and nose lining, and it can cause irreversible eye damage or blindness. This is definitely not something that we want to ever tread lightly with. So I've got all my safety equipment. I've got some nice heavy gloves. 
I'm going to be using my chemical respirator that I use for when I do my plywood builds when I use epoxy. And I've got my safety goggles. So we've got all that handled. And the one most critical thing is you never ever, you always add the water first and you add acid to the water. Never the other way around. If you add water to the acid, it causes an exothermic reaction. And basically what will happen is it will propel the acid out of the container and possibly onto you. So very, very caustic, very, very dangerous product. It's something that we have to use properly and use respect. So we got all our safety gear, we're ready to go. We've got some water in here. It's an old dog dish that I haven't used for years. We got lots of them and stainless steel is something that I can neutralize. You can neutralize muriatic acid after you're done using it by just adding some sodium bicarbonate to it because it has a, such an extremely low pH. But you'll see it, the immediate reaction to it. I'm sure my, uh, my dilution rate is vastly different than what is recommended. As you can probably tell, I'm doing this outside. Got a nice breeze today, so it's nice and well vented. I've got it directly on concrete, so it's not by anything that could be damaged by accidental spray of the acid. And you can see it's already doing all its work. We're just going to let that bubble away for a while. Then we'll come back and we'll see what it looks like when it's cleaned. We'll neutralize it and then we'll get it in the... Now, this is a giant air stone, obviously, for aerating the entire pond. But you could do the same thing with any aquarium air stones. But honestly, for the value of an aquarium air stone, is it worth all this trouble? Now, this bottle of muriatic acid wasn't all for expenses. I think it was under six bucks at my local hardware store. But it always has to be stored safely. You have to respect it. It's generally used in the, in the pool trade, like the swimming pool trade, for dealing with areas where you might have hard water and you want to stabilize or balance your pH chemistry of your pool to make sure that all your products work properly. But even after only a few minutes, you could see that that air stone looks vastly different than it did before. Well, I think it's done as much as, much as it's going to do. It's not fizzing anymore, so we're just going to use some regular baking soda. And we'll let that... Stabilize. This neutralizes it, brings it more to a regular, uh, a stable pH. I thought you'd be doing science experiments with me. I think that's pretty good. All right, well, there's the airstone. I'd say that thing looks almost brand new. We're going to get it attached to the hose and we're going to chuck it in the lake. It's not much to it, really. It's got a nice little threaded fitting. Just put it on. I don't need any tools, don't need any pliers. That's good enough. Let's go throw it in. Now it'll more than likely take a few minutes for the, the pressure to kind of build up in the line. There's about, I don't know, about 60, 70 feet of this piping. I don't know if you can see it, but it's bubbling a bit. It's just not at the strength that it should be. So I might have to go back and do it with the pail idea that we had before. And if that doesn't work, then we're going to have to look at the compressor. It's inside the windmill itself. Maybe the diaphragms are starting to go. Don't really know. We've had it for three years now, so anything's possible. But regardless, we got the thing running. That's going to help it out for now. And we'll see if we'll have to deal with it any further as the years goes on. So as my friends, thank you always for watching. Till next time, take care.